Hi there, I'm Divine from Zero Code and welcome to the Beginner's Guide course. So this video is meant to help you understand the basics of Bubble. As you may know, Bubble is a no-code platform that helps you build and scale applications without any lines of code. So within this video, I'll give you a walkthrough of the dashboard to help you get familiar with Bubble and I'll also provide an overview diagram that will help you see how the Bubble platform works. So without any further ado, let's get started. So once you have a brand new account within Bubble, you'll be able to create a new app by clicking on this button. And then here, you can enter some information about your app, such as the name of your application, the kind of app that you're building, some details about what you're building, and then you can select whether it's external or customer facing, or internal or employee facing. And then you can also select your goal with this application. And once you're happy with the information you've entered, then simply click create a new app. And then once the page has loaded, it'll look like this. So here we have a new application assistant, which is sort of like a setup wizard that will help you set up your app. For this demo example, we'll go through the application assistant to see how it looks like. So let's click on, let's get started. Here we are asked to type in what we'd like to display within the browser tab. So for now, we'll just say demo app and click next. And then here you can select the main language of your application. And if you have a favicon that you'd like to upload, you can click on this icon here. But for now, we'll just go to the next step. And then here we are asked if our app will need some payment functionality. And if so, we can click on install plugin. But for now, we'll just go to the next step. On the next step, we are asked if our app will need to connect to external APIs. If so, we can install the API connector, but for now, we'll go to the last step. And then here, we are given the opportunity to take a tour for the app. But for now, we can start with a blank page since I'll give an overview of the dashboard. And then I'll select close the assistant. So this is the main bubble dashboard that you use in order to build your application. So I'd like to direct your attention to the main tabs here on the left. We have the design tab, the workflow tab, the data tab, the styles tab, plugins, settings, as well as the logs tab. But for this video, we'll only discuss a few of these tabs. So let's start with the design tab. As the name suggests, this is where you design your application. And the design tab is further divided into additional dropdowns, such as visual elements. And these are the elements that you can add to the page that the user will see and interact with. The next dropdown is about containers. So as the name suggests, containers will contain other children elements within them. Examples of containers are a group, a repeating group, a pop-up, a floating group, or a group focus. The next dropdown is about input forms. So these are basically input elements that the user can interact with in order to insert some data. Then the next dropdown is about reusable elements. So these are elements that you can use globally within your app. And the benefit about these elements is that you can configure them in one place and the changes will apply anywhere where you've put these elements within your app. And the last dropdown is about element templates. So these are basically templates that Bubble has provided in order to add common functionality to your app, such as a tab element as well as a sign up login form but only in upcoming lessons will you be able to see how to use some of these design elements. As the purpose of this video is only to give an overview of the dashboard. The next tab is the workflow tab. So within this tab, you are able to control how your app works or functions. You are able to add conditions that control how the user interacts with your app. So for example, you can add the functionality that when a certain button is clicked, something else happens within your app. Within the data tab, this is basically where your app data is stored. And in an upcoming lesson, we'll see in more detail exactly how this tab works. So now that we have seen a simple walkthrough of the Bubble dashboard, it's now time to see an overview diagram, which will help us see the three main layers of any Bubble application. So any Bubble application can be divided into these three main layers. You first have a user interface, then your app has workflows, and it also has a database. So the user interface is basically what the user sees. 
and we use the design tab to build the user interface. And as mentioned, the workflows basically control how the app functions and you use the workflow tab in order to build such functionality. Then lastly, an app also has a database and this is where information is stored and you use the data tab to configure your app's database. So to help you get familiar with using the bubble editor, I'll demonstrate two simple examples. For the first example, we'll just use the design tab. And the goal is simply to make an element change its color when you hover on it. So for example, let's add a shape to our page by clicking on this button and then dragging it on the screen. So initially we can see that the shape has a gray color and the specific color is this one shown right here. But in order to make the shape change its color when you hover on it, we can set a conditional within the conditional tab. So this tab is used in order to control what happens to an element when a specific condition is met. So in order to add a conditional statement, we can click this button that says define another condition. So here we can see that when this shape is hovered, we can select a property to change when this statement is true. So we can click on the drop down and say background color. So here we can select the color that we would like to change to when this shape is hovered on. So let's click to preview. So now when we hover on this shape, you can see that the color has changed. So this was our first simple example. Let's now see our second example. We want to build a simple feature where a username is shown or hidden when a button is clicked. And to build this feature, we'll use the design tab, the workflow tab, and the data tab to help you see how these three tabs work together. So to start off, we'll need to have a username shown on the screen. So for that, we'll have to add a text element, which you can simply add on the screen like so. But instead of just writing the name on the screen like so, we want to read the username directly from the database. So to do that, we'll have to configure our database. So within the main data tab, we have other sub tabs, such as data types, privacy, app data, option sets, and the file manager. But for the purpose of this video, we'll only look at data types. So by default, Bubble always gives us a user data type. So within this user data type, we can create a new field for the name. So we'll just add it as username and the field type will be of type text. And then we can click on create. And after we have made the necessary settings within our data type, we can go to the app data tab in order to add a new user. So the app data allows us to do different things. For example, we can add a new entry to our data type. We can upload or import entries through a CSV file or we can also modify entries. So since we don't have any current user within our database, we can click this button in order to create a new entry or in other words, to create a new user. So we'll give this user a username of John Smith. And we also have the option to add an email to this user. After we've done so, we can click on create. After that, we are notified that the entry was successfully created. And we can see that entry within this table. So now that we have an actual user within our database, we can now read the username from our user interface. So let's go back to the design tab and within the text element, we'll insert dynamic data. And in order to read the username, we can select current users username. And then here it will show the username of the user that's logged in. In this case, it will be John Smith. Now that we have our username added, we can now add buttons that will hide or show the username. So for this button, we'll simply say show. And we can duplicate this button. And then for this button, we'll say hide. We can now add some functionality to these buttons that will show and hide the username when the button is clicked. And as a quick tip, you can always rename your elements in order to identify them easily within your app. So for this text element, I'll simply rename it as username. 
After that, we can now go to the show button and then start or edit the workflow. So when the show button is clicked, we can add functionality to show a specific element. To do that, simply type in show and then select this action. And then here we have the option to select the element that we'd like to show on the screen. In this case, we can say username. And that's also the benefit of renaming your elements because since we renamed it as username, it's now easy to identify it within the list of elements. And now we can go back to the page and add some functionality to the hide button. So when the button hide is clicked, we can add functionality to hide the text by searching the action hide. And we can see the action popping up like so. Then again, we have to select the element that we wish to hide. And just like that, we've built this simple feature. So we have the option to select on preview, but since we want to log in as John Smith, we can preview this page as John Smith by going to the data tab and selecting this option that says run as this user. And as you can see displayed on the page, the username is shown. So let's click on these buttons to see how they work. So after clicking on the hide button, the username is hidden. But when we click show, the username is shown. So as you can see, we have used the design tab in order to build this UI. And then we have used the workflow tab in order to build this functionality of showing and hiding the username. And since we have the username within our database, we have used the data tab in order to read information from the database. And that's the end of this lesson. In the next one, we'll go over a series of concepts that you need to know about Bubble. And these will be fundamental as you continue to build apps. So all that and more in the next lesson.